Okay. Maybe, yeah, so, maybe that's right. He said it was a three, but that makes more sense because he did call the last one an efficiency. Is that, that means a studio? Yep. Okay. So, anyways, the gross rent, I'll tell you because he gave me the rent. Cars um, it. And it's got all long standing tenants. This is 28 25 a month. Okay. He, he pays about he pays three hundred bucks a month in electric, separate gas meters. So, hey Gabe, hey Maureen, Gary, Kim, welcome aboard. Can you hear us, Carson? <clears throat> yes, sir. What's up? What up? Oh, hello. What up? <laughs> Bring it back. So, Gabe, you look like you're on the moon, man. You don't Area. I'm not kidding. Can't hear you, man. Oh. Technical difficulties. Yeah, Todd. So I don't know. We can talk about it more. I mean, yeah, I'll look it up some more. Um, it's all it's on a well and a septic. So nothing in there's no comps within a mile. That's what I'm saying. So I don't really know. You just go off the rent. I'll have to get Marine to help me in this one. Yeah, you said, on board. you said 28.25 and the, he pays how much in electric? $300 a month. Wow. I, that's what I said too. <laughs> Maybe I'll be, that's crazy. It's crazy so talk. We we might have to get that verified. <laughs> yeah, right, I'm gonna say within five miles. Let's see what we got. One. One, sold for one fifty, recently. Um, it was only a two unit though. Yeah, I see. So we'll have to get some. Lock it up as low as possible. Well, have, yeah, we'll run some numbers off the rent, and then maybe Marine can help us if he says no. And it's on a big enough lot. What he was saying is you can split it up, and you could technically build build another prop, build another uh, house on it because it has 200, 200 square feet of road footage, uh, road frontage, something like that. It's on almost two acres, so. Hey, Carson, why don't you go show us your truck, man? Yeah, do it in the truck, man. Just shit out there, man. It's in. Uh, it's two and a half hours away from you right now. Oh, oh man. You can't drive it. I can't drive it. I don't want to put the miles on it. Yeah, I wasn't driving it out here. At least. That's what I heard. Who would you go out there with? Your parents? <laughs> yeah, my parents, yeah. Uh, Sweet. All right, here's a picture for you. I don't know if you can see this or not. Woo! Nice. She's a looker. <laughs> yep. It looks like an old man's truck. I look like you now, Todd. Come on. That's, that's what I was going for. You're right. Oh, yeah, I didn't want to drive it all the way out here. I would have spent 200 bucks in gas. I wouldn't have been able to have dinner money, so I'm going to take it easy. Sweet, 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 man. Um, I, I sent a bunch of links out just now. So. Yeah, me too. I got it. Yeah. Can you hear us now, Gabe? Yeah, I just had to switch headsets. What's up, everyone? Oh, what's going on, man? Yo, yo, what's going yo, on? What's going on? I feel like I should introduce myself first. I've never, <laughs> I've never joined this before. Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, my name is Gabe. I'm a wholesaler. Um, I, my goal is to be a commercial developer in the next five years. So, um, I'm working. I'm working at a Lansing right now. 
So I'm not I'm not really in the Detroit market at all. So yeah, I'm just focusing on wholesaling right now. In Lansing, in Lansing area. Yeah. Sweet. So How's that going do, this, for you? do you do this after high school, like after your classes in high school, or what? No, no. I'm at, I graduated high school. Um, I go to MSU now, but um, sweet. Basically, we're in a break in the semester, um, and I'm just trying to do this, you know with the time that I have. And I did it, I did it when I was in school too. I just moved things around so I can make time every day to call, uh, reach out with people and stuff like that. What are you, um, um, like, are you, how long have you been doing it for? Um, <clears throat> so basically I started learning about wholesaling, uh, midway through summer, uh, and I have to admit, I got a little bit of analysis paralysis for a bit. I, I just got stuck with, you know, watching the videos, cold calling techniques, read this, read that, all of that. So I just recently started um, full time marketing. So I'm doing uh, cold calling and I'm doing direct mail, text blasting, stuff like that. So good man. Good. Have you closed any deals? No, I haven't yet. I it's kind of lame, I know. No, it's but, not. No, dude. Man. It's not lame. I, that's exciting, actually. I mean, we, we were all there. I, I mean, it took me six months to get my first deal, but I didn't I didn't try. And then once that six months was over, I spent a week really consistently marketing and I got my first deal. So honestly, I, I, it took me six months to get my first deal. It was like it was six months of just learning. I, Todd was my mentor at the time, um, and he was a great mentor, but – I would just go there and, and just listen to him, call him. Hey, what do you think about this? Like I wasn't, you can only go so far learning. And obviously it seems like, you know, analysis, paralysis, all that kind of stuff. So I mean, yeah, that's, that's how'd you hear about this meeting? I saw Todd's, uh, I think it was Todd. Uh, somebody posted in the dirty house buyers group. Yep. Um, me. Yeah. And I, I figured I don't have anything going on. So I figured I'd join and well, we need, I need a, I need a good Lansing contact. So me too. Yeah. No. Me too. I'm your guy. Once you start, yeah, yeah, yeah. Information well, in, on the, in, the, in the chat room. Sure. Yep. Yeah, that's awesome, man. That's exciting. I get leads out in Lansing, and I have no clue what to do with them. So. Yeah, cool. Uh, I'll drop my email. Do you have a pretty big buyers list? Uh, not huge. I, I, I'm working with a partner currently. You know, if I can't get anything closed, what I try to do is I try to put something out in the group, and if it's good, hopefully someone will take it. Um, and if it's not, I'll send it through my partner who has a bigger list. Um, and if that doesn't work, uh, are you any, any of you guys familiar with uh, Waymark Homes? Ron yeah, Waven. Ron Waven, yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I, uh, I've talked with Matt and uh, Ron a few times, and I told them that if I can't get some worked out, I, I'll send it through their buyers list. And obviously, they get a big portion of the profits, but it's better than nothing at all. So. Yeah, for sure. I got a buyers list also, same thing. Oh. Just being squatting up is our theme. So squatting up with other people is, you know, they have buyers lists, you know. Yep. That's yeah, that's why I joined this meeting to meet guys like you. Yeah, like well, us three, yeah. we met Mike's from Saginaw, Todd's Detroit, I'm Flint. And so it was just like, there's a Flint deal, I sell it, Saginaw deal, send it to Mike, Detroit deal, it's Todd's, like, and then we just split it and, and move on to the next, but it's perfect. I mean, it's, it's worked out amazing. And that's why I, and right now, like I'm doing a decent amount of volume, but I don't want to dispo a Lansing deal. I don't want to build a Lansing buyers list. Mm. So I don't care if I'm giving up 50% of the profit by sending them to you, even though you might just make one phone call. Like I understand the value in that. And mm. so that's how we do it between each other. Like so many people get caught up on like, Oh, you're just finding a buyer, blah, blah, blah. But yeah. I'm totally willing to give that up, especially if it's not my market. Yeah, me too. Oh, me too. That's awesome. Yeah. I saw I saw a couple of your posts, I think. Are you are you into commercial real estate at all or am I thinking about somebody else? No, not me, man. Okay. I've, I've never done commercial actually. Okay. Well, I must be thinking about someone else then. Um, do you guys want to start going over a deal real quick? Yeah, hang on. I'm trying to Oh, it's recorded in my iCloud. All right. Um, I was trying to record it and when I press it it says please ask the host to give you permission to record. Okay, Maureen's recording it. Right, Maureen? Yeah, I think she's got it. Yeah, she just- Yes. Okay, thank you. All right, sweet. So I don't know, we're recording now. Yeah, let's start, man. Let's start. 
Sweet. You Mike, want? let's hear it, man. It's off. All right, for sure. So, been grinding it out lately, everyone, um, per usual. So, um, was getting a little bit discouraged earlier, but just tried to stay in the best frame of mind as I possibly could because every single no you get is one step closer to a yes. So, I started the day off and was just following up, following up with as many people as I could. And then I actually got a lead today through a, through a text um, reached out to a lady and I was actually inquiring about a property. Um, but, uh, when I inquired, she said, were you looking for this one or this property? And, um, I explained to her that I'd be interested in any property that she owned that she might be looking to sell. And she told me about a property in Flint. Um, not actually the one I was inquiring about that, uh, her and her brother, uh, owned, um, and they originally, the brother was going to live in it, but then their mom passed away. And so they ended up buying, um, they ended up getting the mom's house. And then anyway, so this property in Flint has just been sitting vacant ever since they bought it. And, um, things with this one, the, the, the sister is no longer on the title. So it's just in the brother's name, but as she put it, she basically does like all the managing of it. Um, so I'm trying to coordinate with her seeing the property and i'm also wanting to him get him involved because guys whether you're making a phone call offer or get in front of someone you always want to make sure that all the decision makers are there right yeah so she got back to me and said you know monday would work i can meet you monday you know i was trying to meet see him this weekend but she said the brother was was busy um she said she could meet me out there monday i said listen i, that, I appreciate you getting back to me but I need to know what works best for both of you because I need every single decision maker there when I'm making my offers. So anyways, I was kind of a, um, kind of the, I guess the lesson that, if, you know, wanted people to take away from that and then just being consistent with your work throughout the day and just don't quit and don't get too down on yourself because you're literally just one text message or phone call away from locking up a deal and the numbers sound pretty good. So I'm pretty excited and I'm not going to get my hopes up for this, but uh, yeah, I'm, you know, looking forward to it. So. Yep. Awesome. Um, let me introduce everyone. So you know who we are. Um, Michael Heater, he's our, he's our calling or cold calling, warm calling assassin. The guy is outstanding on the phone. So um, hopefully this year we're going to do more, um, I know we will more um, um, squatting up together, all three of us, and people are welcome to come and, you know, and make phone calls. And, and it's great to be, I'm telling you, when you're in the same room with um, Mike, Carson, me, another, anyone else, we learn from each other and we learn what to say, what not to say. You can listen to Mike. I, I learned so much from him, but that's, um, his one of one of his main things that he's grinding every day doing is getting on the phone, getting lists, making phone calls, and um, and and then Carson, um, he's his specialty in my opinion is disposition in the especially in the Genesee County area for sure, um, and um, he goes to the houses, he gets them under contracts. And, and I know Mike does that also, um, but I, um, I think, and you guys correct me if I'm wrong, I think that's more if Mike makes a, a lead nine times out of 10 or five times out of eight times out of 10, Carson will go to the, to the appointment and lock it up. Is that right, Carson? Usually, um, most more than not, Mike is the one locking it up, but oh, I usually so go with him. It's usually... I don't want to say usually go with him, but majority of the time we run the appointments together and that way yeah. I get good eyes on it and I can say, this is what I think I can sell it for. We can step outside after he runs the appointment and I can say, you need to get it at this price and then he'll go back and renegotiate. Um, but there's been times where he's just, Oh, I locked up a deal today. Here's the details. And it's like, you know, I had nothing to do with it and it's a banger deal. So right. but usually, you know, and it's not nothing set in stone. We just kind of work deals as they come, but usually he contracts them and then, um, I'll kind of give him like a buy price, what to contract them at or what I'll buy them at. He'll go off that and then we'll kind of take it from there. Right. Awesome. 
So question for you um, regarding that. So you, so you're the dispo guy. When you guys go to the appointment, let's say you go together or you go by yourself, either or, are you making, how many times are you making an offer right there on the spot? Um, Mike, yeah, go ahead. Uh, I would say more times than not. I mean, the majority of the time. Um, yeah, especially if the person is, have any inkling of motivation. Um, I mean, we, I guess we kind of, you know, we figure while we are there, we might as well throw out an offer. Um, so yeah, I mean, that's the thing about it is me make as many offers as you can kind of deal. Even are, if you, they get are, turned. You, are you writing the offer and handing it to them? Are you just verbally making it? It's you, usually, it just starts with a verbal offer. Um, so you're trying to, you're trying to negotiate right there, right, right then and there. Yeah. You know, you, you know, you go into the appointment and you want to, like they say, you always want to get a number first, right? So if the number is in the ball range of what we're, what it makes sense for us, then, you know, we'll go out there and we'll do the negotiations. And of course, I always bring paperwork with me. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's always, it starts with a verbal offer and the verbal negotiation. So right. and what we do, I'll say this. So usually like you can tell, depending on the personality type, if they're willing to make a decision that day or not. Right. So based off that, if we feel like they're prepped and ready to make a decision, we will make the offer then. Because if mm -hmm. they're that type of person, if you yeah. don't make the offer, they'll talk to somebody else tomorrow who will make the offer. So mm -hmm. if not, we'll kind of, we might leave, if they're not ready or they might say something like, well, I really need to know how much I owe on this, you know, how much I want for the house. Right. We're not going to throw away our ammunition. So, you know, we'll do our homework and then call them. Like we do make a lot of offers over the phone. I can't, I contracted a house today over the phone that I ran the appointment like two and a half months ago, finally got the deal. The guy just texted me out of the blue, like on Christmas, but uh, yeah, it's, it's kind of 50, 50, but it does have a lot to do with the personality types. If they're, it, like I said, if they're ready to make a decision, the red or blue personality types um, <laughs> make them make the decision or they will with somebody else. Right. If they're analytical or I don't even know what the yellow is, but um, they're going to want to think about it. They want to know this or this. You tell them that. And then when you're on the phone with them, it's like you're back at the appointment again. They know their stuff. Now they're, now they're almost out, pushed out of that, that green personality type into a different one because the analytics no longer matter. They already know the analytics. So yeah. then you make, then you're really aggressive at that point. So that's, it's kind of deal by deal. Yeah. I'm the same way. You got to assess the situation and you don't want to just make an offer. In my opinion, I don't just make an offer. Um, it all depends. I mean, you go, there's ways of getting that person to that point. I mean, you give in, in the, you could talk to them and say, look, in the beginning, if I, if I, if I, um, can make you happy today, are you prepared to, you know, sign an offer? You could always kind of throw that out there and see what, what their comments are or what, what, how they reply to that. Um, I would say personally, me, I would, I would say 30% of the time I'm making offers on the spot because I know they're just, uh, you just know they're going to sign it. Yeah. Um, other times when I'm not sure or if we're way off on numbers then i gotta you kind of gotta let them know you gotta gotta you gotta gotta you know put them in you know tell them your situ you know the situation let me check this let me check that i bought a house actually uh, right around the block and you know we're buying these houses and they want twenty thousand. we're really around 10 to twelve thousand. so if you know you're far off um you gotta you know you might do it differently you know and um something that i was doing more and i would that i haven't been doing lately i just thought of recently and i'm going to start doing it every time is giving them the uh three options like if i am not going to do the op the offer right on the spot i'm going to give them a three option letter you know um letter of intent type deal where i give them three options where i'll give them a cash offer I might give them give them a seller financing type offer, a couple of different ways of doing it that way, and and either way I'll be happy. You know, um, if they take the cash offer, great. If they take the seller financing offer, 
I might do one for five years with, um, a, you know, five grand down and so much a month and then do one for three years with three grand down so much a month, stuff like that. You know, there's ways of doing it and let them pick how they want to, how they want to do it. So it's a good conversation when you call them back and, and I email it to them. And then the next day I'll call them back and say, you know, I just want to make sure you, you know, you're able, you got the, um, op, the option uh, offer. And I tell them beforehand, I got a few ideas that I want to send you. Um, I'm going to work on it and send it over to you. And I set purposely, I send it late at night. All right. Um, because I don't want to talk to them. I, I want them to sleep on it. You know, I want them to think about it because at first they might be pissed off at me. And then, and then when you call them in the morning, it's a different story. You know, they thought about it and, and then you can at least get, get some discussion. And just like you said, Carson, that one deal two and a half months ago, I think you said, right? Something like that. So the money is hundred percent in the follow-up. We just closed a deal today that seven months ago, we made an offer um, and if she would have took my offer seven months ago, she would have got more money. And with COVID and everything else going on, we followed up every three weeks. Um, it was a guy, me and another guy that did the deal. We JV the deal. And it was me, another guy, we squatted up and the lead came from another marketing source. And we each made t just over $2,600 each. You know, if that was which I'm grateful for, you know, 2,600, he made 2,600. The other guy made 2,600. And this was just from following up and she was ready to, you got, you just got to stay up out in front of them. And when they're sick and tired or ready to sell, you got to catch them, you know? So that's my two cents. So Carson's the disposition guy. Um, of course he does, we all do everything, but that's his specialty. He has a great following in Genesee County for sure, 100%. Um, has a great buyers list. Um, and so definitely use him. And I mean, he branches out to other counties too. They both, um, M Michael knows Saginaw probably better than all of us. Um, Carson knows Genesee County better than all of us. We all know it a little bit. We all know Saginaw a little bit. And I'm more of a Wayne County, Oakland County, Macomb County type guy and Genesee County. I love them all. So, and I don't know what my specialty is. It's just trying to solve problems. You know, I don't mm -hmm. know if I'm, I want to be like Mike and be on the phones more. And that's one of my resolutions this year is to be in the office and making deals happen, you know, cause that's, that's where you make your money. And um, I showed five houses today that are on my list and that takes time. You know, that's a whole day event, you know? So I'm gonna branch out and get other people to show the houses and try to train someone up to do that. Cause when you're at a house, there's a way of doing it, but you don't have to sell it. In my opinion, you don't have to sell it there. You know, I could, I could prep all the buyers. Um, you know, I give them my rules of showing not to talk to the seller. Don't say anything in front of the seller. Just say, hi, how you doing? Things like that. Be nothing about the house, nothing about the deal. Any questions, you'll contact me. Um, we could talk outside if I'm there. But if I'm not there, because eventually I'm not going to the showings, I'll tell you that much. I'm going to, they could just call, contact me. And so I give them the rules there. And I went into a house today and the guy was already, I was there on time. And he was already walked through the house. And I told him right in front of the seller, you cannot do that ever again. So I'll never send you another deal right in front of the, you know, um, well, I didn't say that in front of the seller. He wasn't there, but I said, you just can't do that. I don't care. And I, I'm going to, just because of that, I'm going to tell him, I know I'm rambling on, but anyways, um, I will tell him not to park in front of the house till you see me there. Okay. Park down the street. I will be there. You'll see my truck. I'll tell them when I'm driving, when I'm in front of the house, pull up to the house. All right. Cause you got to control it else. Um, they will take advantage of the situation. 
All right, in my yeah. opinion. Yeah. Not all of them, but I have it's it's an, I have buyers sometimes show up 15 minutes early and walk through and they'll all be out, already be out of it, but they just want to ask you, you just got to you just got to prep them like Todd said. Just tell them beforehand. Most buyers aren't going to go against it if you make it obvious not to do that. Um, I'll talk about a deal a deal I closed. I actually I actually bought it myself, so I didn't um, I might have talked about this one last week. Did I talk about the deal I closed in like three days after the first phone call, the rental I bought? Todd, do you remember? <laughs> um, remember? You closed so many deals. No, I don't remember. Kill me, man. <laughs> uh, so the one, obviously, I'll mention because I, I got this contract today. Um, I talked to the guy two and a half, three months ago. I ran the appointment. He, I, I mean, I did everything in the books to get this guy to give me an offer and so we can come to an agreement, but he would not. Just he wouldn't give me anything. He would just say, well, I need to think about it. And that's common, but usually that's after you give them a little ball offer and then they're just – they actually don't want to think about it. They just want to market to somebody else or something. But anyway, so I never gave him an offer. I haven't – I hadn't given him an offer until today when I got the contract signed. I said, what if we could do – you know, after I – he would not give me a number because he wouldn't give me a number at all at first, and I just kept asking him – um well, where do you need to be at to get this done? Because I kept asking him things like, well, what if I could do, I mean, what do you want, 10, 20,000? What's kind of your range? He wouldn't even give me a range. And I just wanted him to commit because I knew he was wishy-washy and he wasn't going to accept anything I said on the spot. So I, um, I kept talking with him and I eventually figured out how much he owed in taxes and everything roughly at the time, which changes obviously. Um, and I said, what if I can do it so you walk away with three to $4,000? And he was like, well, I need to think about it. I followed up with him every single day for a couple of weeks. Just would not give me an answer. He got COVID. I ended up just leaving it at that. He was talking to other wholesalers too, but I knew they weren't going to get it if I couldn't. So right. um, do you want me to go upstairs? Yes. So um, I ended up, he ended up texting me yesterday and saying, hey, can you still do the 4,000? And I was like, okay, let me, I didn't say I could. I said, let me see, because I didn't, I didn't want to do that. The, the, the thing is with that, like the way my purchase agreement works, I make an offer and all the taxes and liens come out of that offer. So I had to run a title search first to see what exactly he owed, how much he owed um, to get that done. So I ran a title search. I said, I'm going to get back with you and let you know after the title search is done. Because I didn't want him shopping my offer around before that title search was done. And then I found out that, that what was owed was $7,759 between taxes, sewer, all, all this stuff. So my offer had to be 11,757, yeah, $11,759. So I called him back and said, hey, if we can do the 4,000, you're ready to move forward with that. That's how, that's, that was a conversation I had with him this morning. Um, and he was like, yes, I am. And the way he had acted the past three months, never giving me one solid answer. I knew he was, you know, serious. He never had said yes. He would never have committed like he did. So I pretty much knew it was a done deal, but I said, look, I'll call you back in 10 minutes. I'll send the agreement. We'll go over it on the phone. Um, because all of you learned this earlier this year, if you send out an agreement and don't call them back, bad idea. They're just going to, that just gives them a ton of time to think about it. Um, and then they have that in their inbox. They just see that as ammo. They can go to the next guy and say, Hey, I have this offer, but I called him 10 minutes later. We went over the agreement top to bottom. Uh, and I answered any question he had about it. Um, and then he signed, took him a minute. He was older. Sometimes it's really hard to get people to figure out docu sign, but I was on the phone with him for like 20 minutes doing something that takes two, but I was just super patient. I mean, I've waited three months for this deal anyway. So I got the deal for $11,759. Um, houses in the area are worth about 75 to 80 fixed up. Uh, this house needs, I would say 20,000. So really big spread here like i'm gonna market it probably for 30 starting out uh somebody buys it for 30 they put 20 into it they're at 50 sell it for 75 realtor commissions they still make 15 grand on a flip and that's a really good rental neighborhood too so i'm excited about that one it was really and i was talking with todd about this yesterday too like it's cool to see all these ups and downs like i got the lead i was actually at todd's office when i got the lead like it was it was at least three months ago and i was excited about it he you know i went he would never give me a commitment. So I just kind of forgot about it. And then I get this text like on Christmas, Hey, can you still do the 4,000? So 
it, that's a, that's always exciting to see those things come through. But um, I'll be marketing that one as soon as I can get a lockbox on it. He just wants to get some stuff out first. So that was one deal. Um, another deal I was just going to talk about really quick because it was a quick deal. I got a call off a bandit sign at 2 o'clock on a Friday. And um, I was like, it was in a good area. Actually, same neighborhood as the deal I got on a contract today. And I was like, hey, can, um, can we – set an appointment for tonight. Can we, are you free like five 30 when you get off work? And he was like, yeah, like that works. So I got out there that same night, contracted it that night and then closed on it Wednesday. So I had my title company do a rush order, close on it Wednesday. And that just gave me a ton of negotiating power because I was like, listen, if I can do this much and close on Wednesday, is that good for you? And this house has been sitting vacant. It's not good to have vacant houses in Flint. So he was super happy with that. I ended up buying that as a rental for myself. Um, so yeah, I mean, that's kind of, that's kind of that. Um, if you have any questions about any of the deals we talked about, throw them in the chat for sure. But um, those were two that I've closed this month. Well, the one I'll probably close in January. So that first deal, Carson, what do you think you uh, like said to that guy um, that made you uh, made him call you back? Right. Because he definitely was having other people contact him. Right. So do you have any any idea why he maybe called you back? Did you, did you just kept up with yeah, them? Yeah. I mean, I definitely, I knew the other wholesalers. Funny enough, the other wholesalers uh, who were talking to him were sending me the lead. Like, hey, this person wants to sell. <laughs> well, well I know, I'm already talking to him, I'm already talking to him. But I said they could, I was like, listen, first, you know, may the best man or woman win, like go for it. But none of them followed up with him as much as go. I did in the beginning, which is funny because I think I pissed him off. I was surprised he messaged me back because I hate that he would not make a decision. It just, it just really just, it just made me angry because I, not that I wasn't, you know, if, if I get somebody a low ball offer and they don't accept it, I completely understand, but he wouldn't even give me, I, I was like, listen, if you want 30 grand, just tell me what you want. But it was frustrating for me because he put me in a position where he could have just gone and talked to anybody else at any moment when he decided to have the offer ready, which it's, he did end up coming back to me. I think on the phone, you know, I was very, I was professional. I was like, I want to get business done. Um, everything I said, I just, I, I guess confidence is a big thing. Um, stuff like that. Confidence and experience. You knew you could sell it. Yeah. And that, yeah. Knowing I can sell it brings me the confidence to offer him this number. So yeah. he just saw me and I was kind of chasing him for the number. So, you know, he probably had a little bit of pressure from that. And he saw me as like, this guy's been trying to write me this check for three months. His hand's right here. All I got to do is give this guy a phone call and it's done. Yeah. That's exactly what happened. He gave me a phone call. I said, I'll have the title search done tomorrow. I'll call you. We'll sign an agreement. And he got what he wanted. So that's a good question. And, and I was surprised he could call me back, honestly. But it's cool to look back on that. Mm -hmm. nice. um, ever ask why he didn't want to make a decision? Um, I did not ask. But in my experience, the reason he didn't want to make a decision, um, he had had the house for a while. He, it was just a pain point for him. He just wasn't emotionally ready. People broke in like multiple times, stole his new hot water heater furnace. And he's selling a house. He's walking away $4,000 for a house in a neighborhood. The houses are selling for 80000 So, mm -hmm. but he knows it's kind of his only option, but it was just not, he wasn't ready to accept that. The house is going into tax foreclosure next year too. And that was another reason I was frustrated. I was like, just give me a number. Let's see if I can get you out of the situation. Like, you don't know what's going to happen in the next couple of months. Like, let's, you know, and again, if he would have shot me a really high number, I would have been fine with that. I just wanted to help him out. But he, um, you know, it was just one of those things. It just took time. And so I did exactly what I could. Um, and uh, I probably should have followed up with him more in the next couple of weeks. But the way we kind of ended off, you know, it obviously worked. It worked out. So that's a good question, though. But it was just a pain point. I mean, it's hard to see a house that you might have lived in or you rent it out and you want to make good money off it. And it's just completely trash. I mean, when we went inside it, there was just animal poop everywhere. It was hair. Everything was in the basement. was torn out. The basement was leaking. So it's, uh, it's just rough for him to see. So and then he did get COVID and, you know, he had that for two weeks. So that was wasn't really doing much, but. It is what it is. You know, I'm, I'm glad it worked out the way it did. He had the time to think about it. He had three months to think about it. 
And when he came back with me, I'm confident enough I can sell this for a minimum of what I got it for. I didn't negotiate with him at all. Um, I just said, sure, I can do it because, you know, I didn't feel that it's just one of those things and everyone does it, I'm sure, but I didn't feel the need to negotiate past that number. Um, just didn't seem necessary. So. Question. Cool beans. Yep. Uh, do we have any questions? Let's see. What's your, what's your favorite method uh, for lead generation? Mike heater. <laughs> Uh, no, the phones TTP baby. Talk to people. Cold, uh, yeah, but what list are you calling though? Like, I I don't have a problem. Like, once I get on the phone, that I'm good. Yeah, it, to actually talk, getting to the people that I need to actually be talking to. Right. I mean, you can't go wrong with vacant absentee owner lists, um, or you know, even if you can get tax delinquent lists, um. I mean, anything with some type of pain, I haven't really had a lot of success with like high equity lists. I tend to stay away from just strictly high equity, but any list with any sort of pain. But I mean, I prefer like the absentee, the vacant, um, those type of lists. Um, We've talked about this too, but my first two deals were off of a wrong number on a list. So... You know, the once and I feel like this is true with every marketing strategy. There's definitely better ones, and that's a good question. Like vacant absentee are great, but my pulled the vacant absentee list and got a family member's phone number that lived in their house on an absentee list. So totally wrong. But it was just I talked to enough people, I was consistent enough, and finally got this deal. That was my first deal. So I mean, when it comes to lead gen strategies, Mike is texting and cold calling those type of lists that he just mentioned. That's his number one. Um I do everything, literally everything. The deal I closed in like four days with Bandit Signs. The deal I got today, I think, was either Bandit Signs or Facebook. Um, I do a lot, and Todd said this, squatting up with other wholesalers. I was talking to yeah. Gabe uh, earlier, and he's in Lansing. So if – and he's on here to, to do exactly what, what I do. This is, this is where I get the majority of my deals. I, I'm here telling you guys I'm from Flint. If you guys get a Flint lead, who are you gonna who are you gonna talk to? If I get a Lansing lead, Gabe is in Lansing. I'm gonna go to Gabe. I don't know Lansing. I don't care that I'm splitting 50% of the deal with him. And I brought that up. I was like, hey man, you're in Lansing. Let's 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 do deals because I get leads in Lansing. So I do that. I'm on both sides of that all the time, just working with other people. I've done that with Todd. I've done that with Mike multiple times, and Todd multiple times. And that's that's just worked out the best for me. Is just networking. Uh, a lot of a lot of uh, realtor relationships as well but um cold calling and texting is cold calling is probably the best place to start that's where i recommend anybody starting is cold calling because you're just regardless if it's the most efficient way to get your first deal uh, or the best strategy to scale it's the best way to get your foot in the door to wholesaling i think because you're learning how to talk to sellers you're also learning the consistency and and cold calling is never going to fail so where other, you know, texting might disappear next year if they come up with a regulation on it. So that's just my two cents. I have to agree with you, Carson. I, I, uh, I don't remember who exactly said it, but I heard a quote somewhere that real estate is a relationship based business. The more relationships you cultivate, the more deals you'll get just naturally. Yeah, it's, it's naturally is exactly it. Like my focus was texting. I don't think, I don't know if I've ever closed a deal texting, but I was like, in my head, I was like, I have to do a consistent marketing strategy. And it just fell into this huge network of people. And now I get deals all the time without even really trying. Like I'm definitely trying and I'm there and I'm active. But that's what I've done instead of um, focusing more on the cold calling and texting, which is great. There's nothing wrong with cold calling and texting, obviously. Uh -uh. Investing meetup. Carson, I got a question. Yes. It's about bandit signs. So I was actually in the process of like designing a bandit sign and I was about to go order them and put them up. And then I heard some stories from people um, who basically have said they had some issues with like the local city ordinance with them, like calling them off the bandit signs and saying like, oh, if you don't, you know, take them down, we're going to find fine you $150 and we're going to you know, come find you and whatever. How do you, 
how do you go about setting up bandit signs so it doesn't, you know, piss off the city and whatnot? So uh, I don't know if Mark is still on here, but he had a situation like that happen with bandit signs he put up uh, a couple of years ago. But don't put them up in A class neighborhoods. Uh, they're called bandit signs for a reason. We don't even get half of them in Flint don't even get taken down. Like they just don't get taken down. The municipality is the last thing they're worrying about. So that's what I would say. Um, I say this too. Like, let's say I put one up in an A-class neighborhood. I get a deal and then the city finds me 500 bucks. If I made five grand off that deal, I still made 4,500 bucks. That's not the best way to look at it. But I mean, that's, I'm not worried about it because I know I've already done enough deals with Banda signs. Um, I had a broker come up to my car once. I had never met him. And because my car had the same number as my bandit signs did at one point, I had it like painted on there. And he said, man, the city keeps calling me about your signs. Like when the city called my number, they must have mistyped it or something. They kept going to his phone. And the city was blowing up his phone about my bandit sign. So I never heard about it. So and when he said that and he was just telling him, you know, those aren't my signs. That was true. They weren't his signs. But I never had to deal with them. So I've never had to deal with the city. Um, Mark, you want to you had to deal with that, right? Mark Robin. Yeah. Yes, yeah, sir. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I've, um, yeah, one time I had like close to 4,000 bandit signs out and I did get in trouble with the authorities, uh, in city of Detroit. I got, uh, uh, I got arraigned 18 times <laughs> for bandit signs that negotiated it down to a $500, uh, payment. Uh, but I never had a problem with bandit signs after that because I made sure I was the one putting them up. Uh, and I had, what I had done was paid my son a certain amount of money to put them up. And so he put them up anywhere he could. So it's just common sense. You want to put bandit signs up where they're not going to cause a problem. So if you're in a good area uh, that, uh, that you don't see other bandit signs, then you're going to go to a, like a service station and you'll put the bandit sign up on a telephone pole facing the gas pumps You'll go to a liquor store, put the signs on their parking lot facing the store if you think that there's problems in that area. If you go into an area and you see a lot of other bandit signs, you're probably not going to have a problem. But you don't ever want to put a bandit sign up when somebody's got a nice clean property and put it in front of it. But yeah. if you're in front of a property that's boarded up or got issues, then great place to put a bandit sign. And sometimes I'll put a bandit sign right on the property that I'm interested in because it's like leaving a business card for them to call you. So, uh, so that's my take on bandit signs. The most effective bandit signs are the ones that are 18 inches by 24 inches. And they're very simple cash for your house uh, or um, you buy houses. Yeah. Yeah. I buy houses for cash in your phone number and make it as big as you can. So, yeah, I actually, um, over two years ago now, I went to a meetup with Todd and Mark and they were talking about bandit signs and they told me exactly which ones the orders and I order, and I've been using those ever since and they've worked yeah. great for me. So yeah, super cheap signs.com. Yep. Super cheap. I use dirt cheap signs. That's fine. Wherever you can get them that work. <laughs> yeah. You know, they're all, they all, oh, this one has hundred dollars for a hundred signs, but then yeah. The other one charges half the price for stakes and shipping. Mm -hmm. It's they all come out about the same. So, uh -huh. yeah, appreciate yeah. that, Mark. Oh, I appreciate you. I'm rolling a fifteen hundred dollar uh, check on you tomorrow, so I'll let you know how that turns out next week when I ask. <laughs> is your phone ringing? We'll see Sounds what happens. Good, man. Sounds good. So, yeah, going to the to the roulette table. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Um. All right. Let's see. Yeah, driving for dollars. Todd said driving for dollars. Yeah. Um, that's always great. That. Creating your own list. Virtualing to virtual driving for dollars now you can do, which is, you know, you can I have someone who just does that for me full time now. And you can just do it sitting at home. So that's kind of yep. game changing. Yep, yep. Oh, we were gonna talk about goals for twenty twenty one. That's what we need to talk about. So um I mean this has been the craziest busiest year i've only been in business two years not even um like two years ago this time of the year is when i met todd uh for the first time and started learning about it a couple months later it was my first deal so um halfway through this year 
we all started meeting up again and I, everything just kind of took off. So I have definitely way bigger goals for 2021 than I anticipated. Um, so I guess I'll just start off. Um, I haven't really given a ton of, a ton of thought into my goals for 2021. I have definitely a lot of stuff that's floating in my mind, like, like even personally, as far as, you know, waking up on time, uh, physically, um, just, just a couple of different things. One very vague goal, which I'm, me and Mike are going to sit down actually and, and make these specific. Cause if you make a vague goal, it's never going to happen, but listening to more podcasts versus music, I actually, I got my Spotify, uh, my Spotify like chart back for 2020. I listened to, it was like 80 something thousand minutes of music in 2020, which came out to 24, I'm sorry, 80, 24 hour days straight of music which is like half the year. I don't even know how, but that's, that's how long I had it playing. Cause every time I'm in the car, even when I'm working, I got music playing and I'll make a phone call. So I want to listen to more podcasts. Like that's, that's crazy. That's a, that's a lot of podcasts I could be listening to. Like I can't only imagine if I would have spent 80,000 minutes listening to podcasts on wholesaling, how much more I would know right now than I do. So that's one goal. Um, I want to close I want to be closing 10 deals a month minimum. Um, I exceeded that this month, mainly just with hard work, but I want to close 10 deals a month minimum um, and maintain my, my average assignment fee. I want to, let's see what else I can think of. 10 deals a month minimum. I want to automate. So I want to hire an acquisition rep and a transaction coordinator. Um, I have crazy amount of leads right now i can't even follow up with them like i had people like if i spent two hours i can get a deal without a doubt or set an appointment for a house i know it's going to be a deal i just have so many leads to follow up with i've just been prioritizing the hot ones or leads that other people are relying on me for so um hiring people automating i want to step out of the business um i love it i i will never come I, I don't know if i'll ever completely step out of it but i want to have the option to i want to have a system set in place where if I want to go ski in the Alps for a month, I still do 10 wholesale deals um, that month. And then if I come back the next, next month, I do 20 because I'm, you know, on the ground and I'm hustling too. So that's kind of my, uh, that's my goals for 2021. i uh, excited to just be way more intentional about everything pretty much. So Mike, what do you got, man? Yeah, so I have never been the one to really set New Year's resolutions or goals ever in my entire life. So I thought at, uh, with this new year coming up that I would actually sit down and actually commit a little, the most time I've ever actually committed to uh, to setting goals. So anyways, this kind of came about, um, I ran across a video of another big wholesaler and he kind of did this, I, I have chicken scratch, so, but it's on paper, I promise. Um, and there's a reason why. So you basically block out six things, you know, financial, family, business, health, personal development, and then also your spiritual uh, goals. Um, and then also the habits that, uh, you know, like three goals coincide with three habits, the habits that will help you achieve those goals, right? And what's nice about having it down on paper for somebody like me, you know, I can look at it every day. I put it on top of my laptop. So when I leave the office, office and pack up I put my laptop away and I put this on top of my laptop so when I come in the next day I you know first thing I do is open my drawer and I see this um, before I get my laptop out so I've noticed that when I have stuff like when I write stuff down or put stuff in my phone it helps me stay accountable and also helps me like stay on track because I can get very um, like off track and get overwhelmed at times so having stuff written down um, definitely helps so um, yeah, so just a couple of goals, um, you know, as far as business goes, like, um, like Carson was saying, he, he hit that 10, 10 deal a month mark. I'm still chasing that. I haven't quite done that yet. I think eight, seven and eight, I've been bouncing, bouncing back and forth. So consistent 10 goals. And I mean, I guess all of our, you know, goals are similar, especially when it comes to wholesaling. Like what well, I would imagine is, you know, we all kind of want to create a business, something that's a lot more systematized, something that like Carson was saying that if we leave the office, we're still able to get deals done. So uh, getting systems in place, tracking my numbers. There's another thing I was working on today. 
um, KPIs, figuring out exactly the numbers I need to hit to consistently get deals. Um, and so, and then, yeah, and then just all around, you know, you know, health is wealth and everything. So I'm just going to try to continue to live a healthy lifestyle and, you know, I should uh, incorporate back into the business as well. So, um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. This is the most excited I've ever really been. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm 25 and I've never been more excited to like get older because I really am excited and to kind of see where, you know, the rest of my life takes me because this real estate stuff has really changed my life. So, um, so yeah, I'm looking forward to the next year. I know just like this year, there's going to be plenty of ups and downs, but, you know, the persistence is what um, is key through all this. So, and then taking the, taking the good with the bad uh, and that positive mental attitude as much as possible. So, and that's another thing, just my personal development is another thing just to continue to grow that. I, this past year is the most I've ever um, worked on like my personal development. So um you know continuing on with that theme so yeah um so yeah i'm looking forward to it i can't wait to see hey mike i can't wait to see it because the the change and growth you had in the last three months alone is yeah just the last three months right 100 percent. yeah exactly so yeah yeah Yeah, so just to give you a quick thing a couple things i got like a ton I, we got a, we got a, a board here in the office that's probably five feet by five feet. It's huge. And I, filled, uh, it's more like eight by eight, but yeah, <laughs> it's eight by eight. And I filled it up with all kind. I mean, just all my thoughts in my head and how I want to, you know, I'm not a, um, you know, I, I guess I'm a visionary and, um, you know, but when it comes to making, you know, I got a thing right here in my office says create cat chaos. Heard this from Pace Morby, and that's what I am. I like to create chaos, and I have someone like Maureen to fix the chaos. You know, fix it for me. So I'm just gonna. That's 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 what what I'm doing. So the big things that I'm gonna do this year is um, number one, my goal for the year for deals is 150. Um, deals this coming year and that's like being consistent on 10 deals a month and then you're going to have some months where you're going to get 15 some months you're going to get 12 some months you're going to get 20 so that's that's how I came up with that number but I want to I want to be able to do 10 deals a month in my sleep like Carson said you go away I'm never going away this year I promise you that but if you do go on vacation, you know you're gonna get your 10 deals. And if you average $5,000 a deal, that's 50 grand a month. And again, um, you could always work on averaging more. That's another, um, you know, it all depends on where you're at. If you're selling Flint houses, Detroit houses, they're garbage houses, be happy with 5,000, you know, be happy with 4,000, 3,000, 6,000 you know, but you're going to score some big ones um, here and there. So that's, that's one of my goals is the 150,000. Um, and I know I, I got plans on doing it without creating, you know, without hiring a, a ton of people, you know, just, you know, I'll probably have a good five people um, on my staff that we work together, working, squatting up with other wholesalers is huge. Um, and training other wholesalers that don't know what they're doing or or want to learn what you know how to do this game and then eventually they'll just go on and kill it you know so those are some things that i'm looking forward to this year it's gonna definitely you know be a great year i want to spend i work you know 10 12 14 hours a day 15 hours and but i want to do that in wholesaling only not other things that I'm doing that I have to do so spend my time wisely in wholesaling I don't have to work 14 hours a day I could work 12 and be happy and um and so that's that's where I'm at so I'll definitely write down my goals throw it on my wall here and see if I could you know 
God forbid I, I don't do 150 deals this year and I do 130, <laughs> I'll be happy, you know. Sweet. Yeah, it's going to be awesome. I'm excited. Like Todd said, is I, you know, Todd's been pretty consistent, I think, throughout this whole year, ever since I met him, was kind of like his work ethic, at least. Um, and Mike and I hopped on the train. I reconnected with Todd after not really talking with him for like a year, um, six months ago. And that just changed one. I mean, if I wouldn't have done that, honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if I had closed two deals this month. Like, I being around him and then Mike too, Mike coming alongside me and then just like getting on Todd's level with the work ethic and just calling with him like that just brought me right to that level as well. And I went from doing average one, maybe one deal a month this year to literally I'm averaging like seven, eight deals a month. So just from working with them, learning from them, uh, getting motivated from them. So you know, I just want to bring that same energy into 2021. Um, and it's cool. It's fun. Like, I'm excited. There's not one ounce of me that's like, oh, man, another year. Like, 2020 has been the best year of my life. Um, and and it's been cool. It's going to be way better. Oh, yeah. Without a doubt. But that's just, I mean, that, that just comes with living intentionally. Like, we didn't, none, nothing we do throughout the day is dependent upon who's president. It's not dependent upon, you know, who tells us to come to work, if we get hired, if we get fired. It's what we do is what we're going to get. What we go out and get is what we take home at the end of the day. So just having that control and it's just been, it's been awesome to see, like, this is what I've wanted and I'm finally getting it. So now I'm, I'm just, I want to make 2021 the full, the, the whole year, like these past six months have been, because it's just been awesome. I'm sure you guys can second that. And so what you're putting into it, you're getting out of it, basically, is what you're saying, Carson. Yeah. The more effort, the more results. Yeah. Yeah. The more, the more concentrated effort, like, but I mean, it's, it's, it's just more effort at the end of the day. Yes. Beginning of the year, there were days where I might've worked eight hours, but I wouldn't even say that. Like maybe I was there for eight hours, but I wasn't doing what I needed to be doing. I wasn't cold calling. Um, if you're in a room with me, Mike and Todd, and you're a new wholesaler and you're not cold calling we're never going to invite you to that room again. Like, and that's just because it's pointless. So that just, I mean, that's, that's how you make money. So that's, uh, that's me huge yeah. for sure. It's being intentional. Yeah. yeah. Being intentional with your time. Yeah. And that's what, that's the plan for 2021. I mean, that's what we've been doing. Um, you know, I think these past six months for me have been like a blur almost. I was just head down and just working, but 2021 now kind of be more strategic with how I'm spending that amount of time for right. sure. I think that's probably all of us to an extent. And all three of us will, will, you know, getting more consistent. Like I, I had in November, I had a big month and, and then I don't know if I think Carson, you didn't have as big a month, but in November, but then in December you killed it. Right. Yeah. And I didn't have that. I mean, I had a good month, but not a great month. And it, it's good with the comp friendly competition. Um, loving to see when people succeed. Anytime Mike gets a closing, Carson, I'm happy. It's like I may, I got the closing. So, yeah. I mean, the more they make, the harder I'm, you know, the more I want to make because I want to be the guy that has the most deals every month so I could put it in their face. And they work harder and then they're going to be, you know, they're going to get more deals. And it's really not all about the money um, to me anyway, you know, and, you know, if you, I suggest anyone that hasn't, you got to start, maybe this is a one for me that I'm going to do this year is I'm going to, I listen to podcasts every day. I'm the opposite of what Carson did this year. I don't listen to the radio. I have no, no idea what's going on in sports. I am a podcast guy. That's what I do, but I'm going to do one book a, a month. And, um, and I really, and I, I listen to a lot of books. I do audible, um, go giver is a really good book. Um, Michael Carson, have you listened to that book? I've read it. I have the paper. All right. Yeah. Great book. And you help. And if you have the mindset of how can you help other people and, um, even if you go to a deal, a house, 
let's say they're in foreclosure and you figure, and I've done this many a times and I help people get out of foreclosure. I made zero, no money whatsoever, but I was, the feeling is great. And um, they're going to refer me to people. Um, they might sell me their house one day down the road, but it doesn't matter. Things happen for a reason. I'll get deals because I did that. You know, and I believe that 100%. Um, It'll come back to you for sure. 100%. Um, my top four podcasts that I listen to, um, you got Pace Morby. Um, Sunday Service Wholesaling Hotline is with Jamil Danji, um, Brent Daniels, and Pace, and um, Steve Trang. Carson got me onto that guy. I was like a Wholesaling Inc. I love that too. That was my main go-to, and but he got me into Steve Trang, and I he doesn't know this, but I'm like, I get enough from Wholesaling Inc. That changed my life. Max Maxwell changed my life. Um, or my business, not my life, but my business. So those are, the, you know, there's probably plenty more out there, but those are my suggestions. You got to listen to Steve Trang, Max Maxwell. Um, and these are the guys that I want to be at. I want to be at these guys' level. Pace Morby, Brent Daniels, and Jamil Danji. And, and they all do everything. They teach a lot of the same things and they do things differently. Mike said he doesn't call high equity um, as much anymore, but he is a Pace Morby sub two student. And I promise you, he'll be calling those because no one else is calling them. There's less competition and he'll know how to get those deals. He'll know how to take over the payments and do all that good stuff. <laughs> so those are, you know, that's my two cents on that. Nice. All righty. Well, <clears throat> anybody have any questions? Um, anything you're struggling with? Yeah. Uh, I, how you doing? I had a couple of questions about um, how, how would you, um, what, what systems are in place for the virtual driving for dollars? Um, there's a couple you can use and Todd, you know, we were just talking about this last night, actually, because I, I told Todd that I just recently virtual drive for dollars. And so all the all the regular like deal machine, if you've if you're doing regular driving for dollars, you've probably heard of deal machine or getting into real yeah. estate. You've probably heard of that. Um, you can use deal machine on your computer at, at home. Right. So instead of just going and getting in your car, you can hop on deal machine online and just go on the street view and just start clicking around you know and just start marking properties so um there's deal machine uh batch driven just came out which is very similar i'm not even sure how they're different or how they differentiate i'm sure they're different in, in similar ways but um you know you can just hop on google maps and you can you can do it without all that um if you oh, want to wow. do it a freeway right you could just hop on google maps because they all use google maps in the, the day but they give you the advantage of you know using deal machine or batch driven boom you see a property you click on it it immediately tells you absentee owner who the owner is and you know gives you property details now yeah. if you do it the freeway just with google maps um you know you're gonna have to just jot everything down and then go look up that property information so worth um, if you have the money Right. If you've got the money, if you've got a little bit of a budget, you know, yeah. I, th I think batch, I think I pay like 100, 120 bucks maybe a month for batch. I think deal machine, deal machine is somewhere around there, but just spend the money because, because it's going to save you time and time is money, especially in this business. So the quicker you can add those, yeah, yeah the quicker you can add those uh, properties uh, to the list, you know, the quicker, the closer you are getting to a deal. So, yeah. <laughs> Hey, Michael, Batch Driven Thank also you. is like a Pace Morby. I think he's part of that. And they do, they did a, I don't know if it was a podcast. I'm sure it's on um, um, one of the, what is it called? YouTube. I'm sure yeah. he did that on YouTube where he actually showed people live, you know, how fast he could do Batch Driven and in, in find 25 or 50 houses and 
you know, he showed the whole process. So, yeah, um, you know, so bats driven. I do, I do the driving for dollars. That's my thing. I'm working with other new wholesalers or people that want to get into the game and I'm going to teach them how to do the um, driving for dollars for me. And I'll train them that way where they, you know, they'll do the driving for dollars and I'll make the calls. I'll send the letters. I'll do all the other work and I'll teach them as we go and they can make a bird dog fee on that. And then I'll teach them how to do it themselves. So that's one way of doing it. Um, Carson had a great idea of working with wholesalers, um, kind of like with prop stream. And that's another way I'm going to, I'm going to steal that from Carson also. So um, train people, it'll benefit both of us. I'll learn and, and I'll get better at my craft, you know, by, by doing that. When you teach someone, you definitely get better at what you do and, and you can help others. Yeah. hundred percent. Yep. I don't see, I'm an investor friendly realtor looking to partner with wholesalers. Yeah, that's, um, that's, I was going to bring that up. Actually, I was on a zoom meeting with a brokerage before I was on the zoom meeting and it would be really cool to see, to see realtors reaching out to wholesalers to get their realtor leads because we get a lot of them and I just send them to realtors. I know pretty much whichever realtor I'm feeling like I like the most at the minute. That's just what I do. Um, so that's one thing, like depending on what area you're in, reach out to wholesalers. If you're in Detroit, I mean, you can make stupid money off that. Just reaching out to wholesalers locally and saying, hey, what, what, you know, do you ever get leads that want to list with a realtor? What do you do with those leads? That's what me and Mike do with realtors. We closed a deal yesterday. We did the same thing with a realtor. Hey, do you get any wholesale, do you, any wholesaler fixer upper leads? And she sent us one like a week later. So um, that's, that's what I would, uh, that's what I would do hundred percent reach out to, to wholesalers locally and, um, get, get deals that way. Cause we get leads like that all the time. So. Absolutely. Yep. Farmington, Detroit, pretty much all over. Yeah. If anyone, if anyone's looking, I suggest having a real estate license is, is no, is a must, but. A lot of people don't, but you learn, actually you learn the business, number one. Number two, um, you get with an investor friendly um, broker and, and my, the company I'm with is Villa Marine is the broker. Um, we're in White Lake, Michigan, I would say 80%, maybe more is virtual. People are more virtual than, um, um, coming into the office and things like that. Very investor friendly. Um, if you want to learn a little bit of the bank owned properties, REOs, um, traditional real estate, they got a great training program. You go wholesale and um, uh, there's a ton of things and, and just learning how to count properties and being faster than everyone else is huge. So it's easy to get your license. It's 40 hour class, you study, you take a test, you flunk it, you take it again, you flunk it, you pay money, take it again, you flunk it, and eventually you're gonna pass it, okay? And if anyone is looking to get their license, I could send you the practice test. I got thousands of questions you could study and you'll pass it on your first or second try. So um, it's 100%, in my opinion, the way you should go for sure. Yeah, me and Mike are both getting our licenses right now. Definitely a goal for 2021. So that's all I had to say. Do you guys have anything else you guys want to add? Nope. Um, yeah. What else? Any, anything for you, Michael? No, I'm, I'm good, man. Like I said, I'm excited for the new year. So just going to um, keep working, keep hustling. Don't stop. Don't quit. That's my simple motto. motto, do not quit. As long as you don't quit, you will end up where you're going. That is the beauty about it. If you do not quit on something, you have no other option but to end up where you're trying to go. You know, you might not get there as soon as you want, but eventually you will get there as long as you don't quit. So you don't got to be perfect. You can mess up, you know, so that's just what I'm going to do. I'm just not going to stop. I'm just not going to quit. So. Worked out so far, man. <laughs> And, that, and everyone's plan is different. I, I met a wholesaler who 
has two years before he retires and he wants to wholesale and he wants to make five grand a month. And, you know, that's one deal a month. So everyone's plan is different. You don't have to do 10 deals. You don't have to do right. 20 deals a month. But, you know, you, you figure out what you what you would like to do. Um, you can learn the business and, um, you know, you could do what, one deal a month is a is is like working a nine to five job, probably better than working a nine to five job. So you can control what how you want to do it. And like Carson said, you could there's like Carson, he wants to build a build a big business where he doesn't have to work into it. All right. Um, I want to work in my business because I'm that's the type of person I am. But maybe one day I don't want to work into it. So again, it's um, and maybe you want to get I suggest you wholesale enough. You know, you got to do other things. You got to get rental properties. Um, I want to get rental properties. Carson owns it was seven. He probably owns nine or ten now. And he's been doing this a, a year, you know, year and a half or something. You know, so um, I want to get rental properties. That's another goal of mine is get a ton of rental properties and um, and and do some wholesales. I got a ton of them. But um, anyone else, if they have any questions, please, we're about to wrap this thing up. That's what we're here for. Really, we don't want you to hear us talk. We want you to just start throwing some questions out there where we can help you or anyone here. We can squat up together and um, do deals together and to give you a quick example squatting up Carson had a deal today he called he texted me and said I got this deal and he wants to go over with me uh, go over it with me and and um, he got my insight onto the deal and um, he might get Mike's insight onto the deal and one of whatever we say might be something that he didn't think about and and pretty much what he is he knows the deal's kind of tight. He might be able to sell it the way it is, but if not, he might go back to the owner, try to get it for less. He might do a fix and flip on it and bring keep the owner in it and split the profits with the owner, things like that. So there's a lot of things when you squat up with each other, um, you know, the more people we squat up with, the more ideas we get and, and we learn from each other, so. We, I love it. I love it. There might be a couple more. Yeah, check the chat room. Okay. Chat, 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 chat. Only thing I see is just license questions, question mark. If she's talking about the questions for the test, is that what you think she's talking about? Uh, uh, thank you so much. It's my first kind. Of, all right. You know, if if your question is what questions are on there for uh, getting your license, talk to Maureen. She's on Facebook. Maureen, if oh, you could drop your Drop your contact information. That'd be great. Or you could contact me. I'll give it to you. Yeah, like the license questions is. She, Todd, she said she was. Um, yeah, there's some. Just questions. responding to somebody else's question. Oh, I understand. Gotcha. So I'll just let you know. But gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. You guys yeah. did. It was an excellent meeting. I got two great ideas out of it. So I appreciate you guys doing this. Awesome. Thanks, Thanks, man. Thanks, man. Yeah. Absolutely. T Nemo. Okay, New York and Connecticut. I see ya. Nice. I see you, Terry. Right. Yep, I'll reach out. I'll reach out for sure. Appreciate it. A couple. Here's a couple quick ideas. I'll tell you what I'm doing, guys. And um, I did this before, and now I'm I'm making I'm gonna be intentional about it, like Maureen said and and Carson said. So I got this. I don't even need a sheet. You can get this anywhere. It's like a wholesaling. It's like a cash buyer questionnaire. Just Google it. You'll get a sheet. It's two pages. And I only write, I don't care. I just write my notes on it. So you could do a blank piece of paper. And what I do is anyone, I, de I talk to so many buyers, I forget most of them. And this year, I'm not forgetting anyone. I, you know, there's so many buyers means if you look at my board back here, it says you are only as good as your buyers list. Buyers equals confidence, confidence equals deals. And it's so true. So if I don't forget any buyers, I could sell any deal. 
Okay. I met two buyers today. I had five showings and two new buyers. And I promise you, they are on my VIP list. And one of them I forgot about. I knew him before. And he is a killer buyer. And what is a killer buyer? Someone that says they're going to buy and, and you don't have to worry about it. They're going to close. They'll close in five days, seven days, 10 days, as fast as you want them to close. You bring them a good deal. Those are the people you want. And so what I'm trying to say is create relationships with your buyers. Keep them in your mind. Keep them on a board. Um, I got them on a sheet. I put them on my list. But and I make notes and I'm going to I'm going to call five buyers per day and make sure I stay on um, because one one time you might call them and they might not be buying that. You know, they're in the middle of a couple rehabs and they're not buying. And you'll find out when, it, you know, you'll find out, you know, you need to call them in 30 days. All right, I'm going to call you back in 30 days. And then, you know, so that's yep. my tip of the day, I guess you're saying. It's yeah, huge. that's huge. Knowing your buyers is huge for sure. Yep, absolutely. All right. But that's it. Happy New Year, everyone. Appreciate you guys tuning on. Yep. Happy New um, Year. Next Wednesday. I don't know what we're going to talk about. I know Carson's going to get a schedule together. And if you guys please um, send us a message on Facebook, go to TC Deals Detroit, join it. And please send us a message of what you would like us to talk about. We always talk about a deal. We would like to, you know, um, talk about a topic and answer questions. That's really what we're looking to do. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's one of our. That's another one of a goal of ours. We're gonna we're gonna have some topics lined up for you guys moving forward. So, uh, and we'll yeah. probably we'll probably have some guest speakers. Um, I'm gonna get Ron Woolraven on the on on the line with us. He might talk about disposition, um, and I'm doing that because really I'm being selfish because I want to know how he does his dispositions. You know, because <laughs> yeah. time wholesaler, right? I might learn something. Well, you might learn something. And then I got another guy. If you ever heard of ROI, um, you might not heard of them because they're big time. You know, they were spending 50 grand a month in, in marketing and they are huge. They do a lot of deals off the MLS. They don't even go to the buyers. They post their stuff on the MLS. So we'll get him on the line. And I know they belong to, they run a couple of humongous masterminds and they belong to masterminds. And so I'll work on getting them on the line and it'll be something different than the traditional, in my opinion, the traditional real estate that I do. So I could maybe learn and hit their level because they're at a different level than myself, in my opinion. And, um, and then we all could learn together. But again, if you're brand new to this, just figure out how you could get your first deal. Number one, squat up with someone have them help you either get the deal and they can help you sell it. And then after you figure out how to get the deal, then they could just help you sell it. Then after you figure out how to sell it, you're on your way. And how can you do one deal consistently a month? And then how can you do two deals, double your income per month? And then how can you do three deals a month, four deals a month and get to the point you want to get to. And I'm telling you, it's, you could be a millionaire doing this business if that's what you want to be. Or you can make a hundred grand a year if that's where you want to be. Or if you can make $2 million a year, if that's where you want to be. So, you know, and you just don't have to wholesale. You know, there's all kinds of different things you could do. You own rentals, apartment complexes. Um, you could go into a different business. So many things. So that's, that's my, that's all I got to say. So. <laughs> and one thing I want to add, Todd, is, you know, you guys are all available. Todd, Carson. Michael, they're all available on social media. So if somebody is struggling with understanding how to put a property under contract to complete their first deal, reach out to these guys. They're willing to help you. And, um, and that's all you need is your first deal. So engage. Yeah, definitely. I've had two people reach out from this call. One of them got their first contract yesterday. Um, the other one is going on an appointment tomorrow, their first appointment. So just reach out if you need help. But like I said, thanks for tuning in. I'll definitely see you next week and everyone enjoy the holidays. Happy, Happy New Year, everyone.
Hoorah. Thank you. Thank you. See you next week.